Ready in three, two. Damon D here. Yeah, about to be serving polar white in the northern lights. <laughs> yes, hosts don't get cold. Look, we're indeed here in the Arctic Circle, better known as Svalbard. Svalbard, better known as the Arctic Circle. I don't know, I'm cold out here, y'all. Body on Frozen, credit reports on Frozen. Ain't never seen the movie Frozen. Uh, <laughs> let's just zoom out real quick on the map just so we can like put this into reference. Uh, I don't know, like I just booked a trip, a solo trip. <laughs> Now I'm here and this is honestly, well, one, I think my camera's broken because it's too cold, but to tell you the truth, I'm not even a nature guy. <laughs> Guess I am now. In this Damn. <laughs> oh my god, just described all of humanity right there. It's one of these mornings, I don't know if I'm gonna make the hotel breakfast. There is a snowstorm going on. <laughs> it's happening, it's all happening. I've arrived. Oh my god, it's hard. They have oat milk or something. Half a drink. It was a traumatic experience. How long would it take to walk to the grocery store? I ended up back here. I mean, look at it. Um. I've lived a good life. Okay. Ready to cross The word you're looking for is fashion. Okay. Not so bad. Really not so bad. Oh my god, you can hear it. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. Is that a taxi? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, terrible <laughs> oh, terrible weather. Yeah. Even you're saying that? Yeah. And did you come up here to be a taxi driver or what brought you here? Yeah, I just came here last year. I think of Omicron and I was afraid of another lockdown. Oh, so you came up here? Video. Okay. I thought it'd be fitting to do my book in the coffee shop. I love how you take your shoes off everywhere you go, and how do you take care of a lens in this weather? Hi. Uh, the coffee shop's name was Huskies. I didn't make the connection until I walked out that there are actual Huskies in there. Y'all know I don't really pet animals, so. <laughs> So I was in and out with the Huskies. I gotta get me one of these outfits. <laughs> the part that's really giving about the Arctic Circle is that they got oat milk up here. <laughs> I don't wanna hear no mainland coffee shops talk about how you guys don't have oat milk. They got it up in Smile Bar. <laughs> so this is where everybody is. 
they got kale up here? Three eighty. The fact that this is cheaper than Whole Foods in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I walked this far. All right, that's nice. at least you tried. I walked to the supermarket, yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to experience walking going to rest. <laughs> Try. Just across the street. Yeah, I'll be running into the taxi truck. It's the fact that I got this Mexican aisle here. Vegan taco mint, like all things considered, 350 for some vegan taco mints in the Arctic Circle is not far off from the states. One thing that I've already noticed when you are paying, you type the number in. In France, for example, they type the number in. Or in the States, they take your whole credit card and they like take it in the back room, probably write the number down. <laughs> well, I'm not one for a group tour, but that's how you do it up here. Hi. Hi. Damon, Dominique. Check. And then we will look for the Northern Lights. There's a woman out here running. Do you see this woman running? She's about to get pulled. <laughs> from here on, you have to carry both a rifle and a flare gun to scare off the bears. I saw him pull that rifle out Indiana style. <laughs> How often do you actually see a polar bear? Well, it's not really time uh, time schedule, but uh, I saw six. The oh, whole, you actually uh, did. Whole, yeah. okay, with the summer season over so for trip, we will stop by a little cabin. Maybe have a bonfire. I have some coffee, some biscuits, some hot syrup. Some coffee. What is syrup? Like black currant concentrate, and you mix it with hot water. It's kind of like a tea. So no, is this a Norwegian thing or just like uh, cold I weather? It might thing? be a Norwegian thing. What made you move? Here? Like move to Svalbard. Well, Where again, are you from as here? A, as a student, right now it's super hard to get housing. In. The tourism is growing. The governor has put a limit on the amount of houses. Nobody can find a place to live unless you are working for a company that owns. Yeah. Housing. I heard anybody can come up here and live. Is that true? Yeah, but the thing is, housing is a problem. Mostly the apartments are owned by big companies. Oh. What about the locals of Svalbard? Like, do you guys want more accommodation or do you like how it's only 3,000 people-ish? Uh, it's kind of a debate in town at the moment. The other nationalities are who? Oh, it's really people from all over the world. Companies and the universities, they have a quota for Norwegians. The geopolitical pressure that Norway holds the claim to Svalbard as long as it is inhabited by Norwegians. Anyone else got a question? Anyone else just take two flights, book this expensive ass trip all the way to the fucking Arctic Circle? Y'all got a question? In this cabin right here in the middle of Svalbard. In the middle of Svalbard. In this climate? In this climate? Does anybody have a question? No, to be fair, I was the only native English speaker. I think that was part of it too. Don't hate me because you hate me. <laughs> It's like, of course I got all these questions. It's my job. And people are here like, I'm just trying to see Aurora Borealis. <laughs> but you didn't. We're all a little like, but the mood in that snow cat was this. <laughs> the sign, it was giving the Las Vegas sign. We're seeing the polar bear sign. <laughs> Sorry, this is uh, just like been in public too long. I haven't been able to say my thoughts. It's just like really quiet in those cafes. No, but for, I'm actually, it's quite cool that if you wanted this life, you could have it. So I'm proud, I'm proud, oh my God, I'm so proud of these people. I'm happy for these people that they found a place for them. All right, well, it was nice to see a cute person. There's a lot of cute girls here, but like a cute guy for once. Been here for 24 hours. Whew, too long out here. All right, who wants to play a game of how many seconds will it take to run out of mattress in Svalbard? Let's see how many gay people live in the Arctic Circle. <laughs> Svalbard. Yo.
You ran out of people. <laughs> there wasn't one. Zero. <laughs> like, not one? There's not one LGBT ally up here? <laughs> oh my god. That's homophobic. Frankly, for Norway, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow. I changed my flight. I'm going on a swimming and bailing tour and I'll be back later. Beautiful. Oh my god. Yes. Okay. Wait, I'm drive to get in right now? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was at 10, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> I didn't eat, but I'll just intermittent fast all day, it's fine. We'll be back what time, like afternoon, right? At four. Ooh, let me grab a bag, I have food in there. <laughs> oh, me. <Ooh. laughs> Hello. I got my food. Yeah, no worries. You can't be born here. Like there's no, uh, there's no maternity ward here. That's a thumb rule. Don't get pregnant. Wow. <laughs> there's a lot of kids here. <laughs> yes. If I say something, regardless of what it is, you just have to trust me that I know what I'm saying. Okay. That's all right. The camera wasn't on, but our guide warned us that it might get like yesterday morning. Oh my god, it's hard. I said, uh, I couldn't even walk across the street. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Visibility. <laughs> now I'm feeling like Ja Rule and Ashanti on Miami Beach with jet skis. Besides that rifle. <laughs> that rifle. Oh, that's a water polo. That was the craziest thing I've ever done. And I'm gonna pull up a picture from Google, whatever, Google Images. Sorry, my mouth is like this. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up a picture, but I need you to know, imagine the worst snowstorm you've ever been in and trying to ride a snowmobile for the first time. And since I was elected to be in the back, which was one of the skilled people, I got placed in the back. <laughs> The pressure was on. <laughs> Come on, look at this. Did I already tell you guys about the psychotic break that I thought I was having? And I was like, okay, going to the park is one thing, but when you when you're out here and there's only like three people in front of you and like some lumpy looking reindeer you start thinking like wow i could really die right now i could really die right now if not from the hypothermia from the polar bear that's about to run up on me right now <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> this. Hey, it's pretty good. Have you noticed with global warming, climate change, has it has much changed up here from your point of view? Uh, there, there is more extreme weather. Uh, this is not extreme. We have more rain, precipitation until like the. 80s until we got the airport here. Slonger Green was isolated six months a year because you couldn't get in with a boat. Frozen. Yeah, there came a ship in today. So mm. before you can, until May you couldn't get in with a boat. So now they can get in. It's February. So yeah, they're saying like the water's warmer. Yeah, there's a lot of the Gulf Stream penetrating. No. 
Wow. Two hours into the way back, a freak snowstorm hits. The German couple on my tour almost flips the snowmobile over. <laughs> Since I'm in the back, I wait with them. <laughs> then I get stuck. Hi. I got stuck. It's a lot right now. It's a lot. Let me show you. Polar bears are fast with such heavy animals and can run at 30 kilometers an hour over short distances. This place is abandoned by God and ought to have been abandoned a long time ago by mankind as well. 30 minutes later, I'm left waiting for the guy, <laughs> pistolless, and waiting to be a polar bear's afternoon snack. around to pick us up. At this point, I'm still alive, but barely. I feel like I'm in that white room in the Matrix. Am I dying or am I actually becoming alive? You know, waking up to the real reality. What is reality? And most importantly, where is the nearest polar bear? The wind gusts. My phone's battery is diminishing rapidly due to the cold. It's a miracle I even got this footage. Yes. also don't know. Um, I'm stuck between having the time of my life and feeling like I could literally die out here and only four strangers would know about it. It honestly gets me in the feels. Like, what am I out here living for? Who's important to me? It's funny how the nothingness can make you realize the everything. <laughs> I really thought I was going to die today. Like, what I was trying to say in those clips is like, imagine you have to eye doctor. doctor. And you have that thing in your hand. Okay, click those buttons. When you see something, something black come on the screen. And you're like, I don't know if that was a person or something that flashed on the screen. That's what this is. That was what I just did. Even the guide at the end when we were just like, <laughs> emotionless. He said this. Couldn't see because of the whiteout. On the way back, that was really bad fall bad weather. If it had been that bad weather in the morning, then I would have cast the trip. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. And I wanted to even wait to talk about the whole snowmobiling thing because I've never in my life heard anyone talk about snowmobiling without the word accident also in the sentence. We also had a snowmobile uh, flipping and a sled flipping. Was I scared? Uh, ask you at that time, did you feel scared? At any time. Hell yeah! I was scared. I was definitely scared. Oh, I was scared the whole time. But that's also like why I came here. <laughs> like I came here to experience the extremes. I could have died today. And like it's one thing to be on about the snowmobile, to be on about the elements. We haven't even really mentioned much about the polar bears. I was in the back. I was sitting pretty in the back. If a polar bear was just like going for a walk, he would have spotted me there in the back, looking very sweet and juicy. I do gotta work on this a little bit more though. <laughs> you know, you go in phases. Right now is my snowmobile phase. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh.
Today's supposed to be one of the first days of sun. See, I kind of messed this up. I thought I was coming here for the polar night. <laughs> Turns out what they meant by no sun, they just meant like, it's gonna be like overcast. <laughs> like it's still light out here. Yeah, I missed the dates. It's supposed to be November to January. It's fine, like you come when you can come, right? <sighs> Can't see. I just haven't gotten over yesterday, I'm sorry, I'm still processing. <laughs> Cause I was thinking like, why is it the moments that we feel most alive are the ones that were closest to death? Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all sit with that one for a second. Like, why does it have to be when I'm close to dying that I feel the most alive? <laughs> Maybe it's then that you really realize it. I don't know, I'm, I'm in this like, y'all know how I can get. Well folks. I got a postcard to my grandma's to write. The word you're looking for is fashion. Wait, observation. I'm walking, obviously. It's about 40 minutes into the main town, but um, I'm realizing there's not one advertisement. I mean, it's not like you can go buy it, even if there was one, but like, there's no fast food. Like, there's just no, there's not one ad on a building. There's not one billboard. Like, also, I'm walking in front of this group of school children, and one of them fell and everyone laughed. So it's interesting that even, even up here, like, those things still apply. He fell down. For the grandmas. <laughs> I don't have five grandmas, by the way. No guns. I wish I could see the northern lights, but I didn't see them. Oh. Oh well. Yeah, it's not too late. You've been here for six months? Yeah. Where were you before? Norway? No. That was $17 for five stamps. The best part of the day. And Boone, I was giving alpha male out there, talking kife. <laughs> you no, know, the way I was whipping that snowmobile out there, almost had these locals offer me up a job contract. <laughs> I was fizzying the mech. Bitch, it's the way I almost died out here. This was me on the snowmobile driving through Hurricane Katrina. And everyone's on about these freaking polar bears here, but show me one. Just one. I saw fucking reindeer, which, by the way, I thought were made up, but no polar bear. It's Damon in the North Pole. I don't know what I'm doing up here either, Grandma. It's cold. Keeps running, running, and running, running, and running, running, and running, running, and running, running. Where's the post office? Can't be too hard to find. <laughs> right there. No guns. This ain't the United States. <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi. I booked the city tour at four. So we got to the first stop also, the Polar Beer sign. Okay, my favorite part is that the tour guide got out and took a photo of the Lumpy Dumpy reindeer. <laughs> He's lived here forever. That's cute. That's really cute. Taking it day by day. Take about two hours. Hit, but I think we go first in the Wally. It's called Wally number one. And in Wally number one. This whole time he's been saying Wally and I'm like, what, what is a Wally? Hima Valley, like come on, that kind of stuff makes my heart warm. The Wali. So, we're up here on the natural resource. This is where they take all the coal. <laughs> they take all the coal and ship it to Germany. Which is where um, it gets shipped to Germany because that's where the car industry takes it and like burns the gasoline to ruin the environment from me. I don't, it's just like, does this make sense to anybody? There was 141 people on the plane and everybody inside. Very big accident. There was 26 people inside the mine and everybody died. Big explosion. Dang, and it just keeps going. And this is the Global Seed Vault. This is the Global Seed Vault. So, the Spalbart Global Seed Vault is the largest safety backup of the world's crop. 
The Svalbard Global Seed Val... The glo... <laughs> oh this might be... Every day is like more beautiful than the last up here. Come on. Good morning. morning. Damien? Yes, I'm Damien. Yeah? Osman? Hey, hello. Hello. So again, I did have lots of questions um, about the Global Seed Vault. Of course, my phone like isn't loading right now. <laughs> I, I didn't plan it, we're in the North Pole up here. Just how many seeds are in there? Day 1,195,244 seed samples inside. Are we talking like kale? Kale salad. Species for food and agriculture. Are we gonna get to go in or no? No. Come on! <laughs> oh shoot! The risk is too high, the values is too high to bring people in. So now the security is uh, increased. You think someone might... Okay, let's, let's not go there. How do we know in 100 years that these seed genes will be conducive to grow in 100 years? Like, how do we know that the soil will allow for that? Not for a remote doomsday, but gene banks are at risk every day. Uh, some gene banks have lost seeds because of war and conflicts. They have lost it for floodings, for uh, fires. It's actually a part of an active global system for conserving genetic resources of plants. So if, if we were to walk in these doors, what would we see? Uh, in the first place, you come into a long tunnel. It's like an ordinary warehouse. Yeah, I was thinking it was a botanical garden down there. <laughs> okay. If we heat it up and grow plants there, the seeds will probably die because it's too hot for them. Potentially you could store other things inside of here too, like a, it could be a time capsule. There is a Arctic World Archive in the coal mine over there. Interesting, I had no idea that that was another thing over there. Okay, I thought I saw this whole city <laughs> in three days. And now we go to the airport. And that's my taxi! <laughs> there you go! Swerving that van up here! Yes! <laughs> Thank you. See you later. Things are going very south here in the North Pole <laughs> the past few days. I am here at the Best Western here at the Oslo Airport <clears throat> have a layover. A few things as we wrap this video up. It was pretty cumbersome to get here even from Europe. Like I remember struggling even from London to get to the North Pole. It's, that's why I'm like, uh, oh, okay. You know what? Fuck it. Like most of the flight options were three planes. If you do want to go to the North Pole, I would say the, I mean, there are two main times to go. It's either like the 24 hours of sun, like you can see the midnight sun, or you go for the darkness. I was there like, you know, halvesies. You know, I really like how they do this. Like you just get your own duvet, but they always set it up like this here in, in Norway. I think it's like a Scandinavian thing in general. Um, speaking of, okay, right, right? <laughs> Y'all are like, what? There's like a major exhibitionist. <laughs> movement infiltrating the Scandinavian cultures. They don't do curtains, they don't do blinds. You go anywhere in Scandinavia and they just like be leaving those curtains wide open. Like, this is my explanation. Of course, I'm not from here. I don't really know. Here's my take on it. Okay, it gets dark. Like we're so far up north, the day gets really short in winter. Therefore, maybe in order to have more light on the street, everyone leaves their blinds open and curtains open. That way it's not just like one super dark depressing town. That's that's like the only logical answer I had. When you're eating out at a restaurant, like my veggie burgers, those were $19. And then if I got a glass of wine, that was $11. My hotel, I stayed, I mean, I've been staying at hotels like this, it's like 110 per night. I stayed total probably five nights. My flights were 300 each. So now we're at 600. So you can do the math, like you're over a thousand easily. You know, like that, it's not cheap. This is not the place to go when you're not making good money. Like save these countries for later. I wanted to mention the prices because after the book tour meeting you guys, you were like, I like how you, I like how you make travel accessible. And then here I am going to North Pole where it costs so much money. <laughs> No, but that's not the point. See, most places I go, I'm not like, I'm not a high roller. I'm not interested in that kind of stuff. Like, I don't care about those clubs where people are like in stilettos, like waiting outside in the line for three. 
But this one was expensive and inconvenient, which is the whole point. It's very remote, that's why I wanted to go there. I stayed four nights in the Arctic Circle and I think it was a perfect amount. I think anything less I would have felt rushed. Anything more would have like possibly started to feel like a drag. Then again, like if you're an adventure traveler, yo, you could spend weeks up there and be totally fine. I wasn't able to see the Northern Lights, but they do say that the North Pole is actually a little bit too far north. And if you want to see the Northern Lights, like in Europe, you need to go to like Tromsø, Tromsø, I'm picking up the accent, or like Lapland in Finland. See Aurora Borealis, you're supposed to go to Tromsø, which is still on the mainland. But I wanted to come to the Arctic Circle, I'm sorry. I mean, ultimately, you're outside like just waiting. It's almost like if you went outside at midnight and you're like, I hope I see a shooting star. It's not like they're just like, plastered all over the sky, they're moving and they come in and out. You can download phone apps that notify you when the chance of seeing Aurora Borealis is high. I'm a huge fan of how you have to take your shoes off everywhere. I think that's really cool. I think it just makes it feel like a home. And it, I don't know, just like, it takes a little bit of the social awkwardness out of the room, I think. Cause you just feel like you're in your living room with everybody. Again, all things considered, I was so surprised at how oat milk was like readily available at the hotel, uh, at the coffee shop. The food prices at the supermarket, reasonable. It was easier to be there than say some places I went in Tunisia, which by the way, I still gotta edit that video. <laughs> I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I find it really interesting how even carrying a camera has different reactions amongst different cultures. So typically if you go to like warmer destinations where the people typically tend to be warmer, everyone's like, camera, oh my God, come see my store. Can let me do an interview. Completely the opposite up here. <laughs> In fact, I reached out to so many people. I reached out to different tours. I mean, I was trying to get the tours for free because I've been promoting them, you know? They were all like, no, sorry, we're not interested. We're not interested in your profile. I was like, damn, all right. Reached out to YouTubers, which by the way, Cecilia, who has a channel all about the North Pole, living in that town, the specific town, uh, I think she was too busy to film something, but then I ended up running into her in the coffee shop, so I knew like, at least I was filming a video that seemed somewhat representative if she were there. I was gonna say, I thought she looked familiar. That's her. That was cool, and she was super nice. With that, everybody, I'll leave you with one more philosophical thought. I always think it's really interesting how some of us are drawn towards nature, and some of us are drawn towards cities, and I feel like these are two different categories of people. The people who are drawn to nature are more interested in the things that are just naturally beautiful. Like this is what nature provided, whether I'm here or not, I'm drawn to that because it's natural. Then you have the other category of people, which I think I'm more on this side. We're drawn to things that the human made. You see, like I like being in the city. I like seeing art. I like being in coffee shops and reading books. And I like playing tennis and reading philosophy and going to the raves with other people and dancing and flirting. See, that is more of a what humans have created here on earth. And once again, I might be taking this way too far. <laughs> Curious what y'all think about that. I don't know, does that, does that uh, theory hold? I think it does in some aspect. I mean, some people are, whatever. We can discuss this down below in the comments. Thank y'all for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you want to. Catch y'all in the next one. Be easy. I almost died out there today. You almost lost me. I can't believe you were doing that. That's not very safe and grounded. <laughs> I was about to be grounded and under the ground. I know you're hungry too. See, I, what I should have done? I should have left my book, You Are a Global Citizen, up there in the North Pole. Dang it. Let me find out the Arctic Circles for Global Citizens. I read that anybody can come up here and live. Anybody. Very uh, introspective phase right now. I'm watching Brave New World from the 1980s. Fucking crazy movie. I mean, pas tant que ça. That was the worst French accent I've ever done. Pas autant que ça. Not that much, but like, whatever. So what are you doing tomorrow, like scaling the side of a mountain or something? <laughs> like when I look up in the sky and I see the Big Dipper, I can recognize that pattern night after night after night. But y'all over here in science telling me that these stars are moving at like billions of miles per hour. Okay. Okay. So if they are, then why can I recognize the pattern, the same pattern? Are they all like moving at the same time? <laughs> Shout out to my ex for letting me borrow all of his ski equipment. How's the dance? <laughs> it's wet. It's fine. It'll, it'll be fine. 
I was fine with my camera breaking today. For reference, they were playing Beyonce at breakfast. <laughs> like, her reach is still reaching far north. I was about to say, he's up here where? Okay, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm in Armenia. The, the German man came over to me because we thought the Italian guy was like, I'm out of it, I can't do this. And the German man came over and he's like, ah, but it's a man. And I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my snowmobile. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm about to be right there with him on that slap. <laughs> okay, I gotta focus. Bye.